Luke's, what's the address of the emergency? Police emergency. Go ahead, caller. Almost every second. Please. Listen carefully, I'm going to tell you how to do resuscitation. Of every single day. Good. All right, come on, calm down. Dad's got a bit tasty now, isn't it? Someone, somewhere. I need you to look at her vagina very carefully. You are. Dials 999. <gasps> it's a hell of a responsibility. He's got an IV back. You wouldn't be human, and you definitely wouldn't do this job if you weren't affected by cause. Just tell them in the background to calm down, farmer. Yeah, I'm gonna try and get shut up. But what makes an emergency? I can't call a taxi for you, no. The definition keeps broadening. It's a bit embarrassing. I've just been having sex and something's just snapped. As Britain keeps changing. Oh! Get down to the ground! No! Stop this! No! fire! Again! Get the real police to feet, please! We see a different side because no one really calls us if they're happy. Do you want some water? Quick, quick! Get down there, sort out! We follow the calls. We need to come on the rocks. He's going to kill me. As they are passed to police and paramedics. We're coming on an emergency response. They'll be there very shortly. Right across Cheshire. Just want to make sure you're all right. There's nothing wrong. A county with a growing divide between the haves. Play football for excellence. We play football for excellence. And the have-nots oh, is plain to see. You're taking the word of a rich man over the word of a poor man. This is life through the eyes of those we rely on to protect us from each other. I, I do hope you can catch them. And from ourselves. Pull your pants off and stop acting like a child. Why Sit am I down? Not kid? It's almost become some kind of Mad Max kind of society where it's a dog eat dog world. <laughs> not a very good boyfriend if he slams your head against a brick wall, is he? I just wish I could take it all back, but I can't. I wouldn't turn my back on someone when they want help. You know I'm here to help, don't you? Yeah. How may I help? In Cheshire. Every time I send someone up here, they never come back. The emergency services are well used to encountering... Look at this state. ...all manner of strange behaviour. You've been seen jumping off a wall about five foot high. Oh? Yeah. But when does acting unusually... I think you're from an accident or something, but there's two people into my bed. ...become a cause for genuine concern. you got mental health issues, you And are police and paramedics best placed to deal with it when it does? Just calm down, we're getting you to the hospital. <laughs> there's vulnerable people discharged into care in the community, but that care in the community seems to be Monday to Friday night till five. Good evening, Cheshire Police. How can I help? Hi, it's am um, calling from the Odeon Cinema crew. We've got a guest in one of the screen who is saying quite abusive stuff towards the film. Yeah, what films are you watching? Um, Hunger Games. I'm just wondering whether it's abuse of being racial. Bear with me. What was he shouting out? Warfare, die you bastards. And uh, When the team member told him to leave, he, he did... Call Cheshire's 999 call handlers are privy to many of the county's more bizarre goings on. What's that, sorry? Some people that are being deadly serious, you sit there and think, is this a prank? OK, when you first called for an ambulance, what was wrong with you? There's just too many weird things happening to me all at once. I've had three takeaway mess ups, three taxi mistakes. The milk I got from the shop tonight is, is bad. I've had three bad milks today. Hmm. The weirdest one recently, he said, what's your name? Do you want my real name or my code name? Your real name, please. I know, I'll give you my code name. All right, no problem. He was telling me that he was Batman. His Batmobile was outside, but it's invisible. and No one can see it, and that Robin's left him. All right. I don't even think you realise that these people exist before you start this job. You just, you know, like, you see these weird characters on TV. You never think that there's people that are like that in real life. That's 
What's the address of the emergency? It's Warrington Bus Station. There's a man, he's, he's storming up and down the street and screaming, he, he's possessed by Satan, he's possessed by Satan, and there's, there's women and children about, they're getting quite frightened. Screaming, possessed by Satan. He's a 45-year-old male outside Ladbrokes at the bus station. They've just come on and said, police are on scene and they think he's done a runner, but the leave us running to it. Oh, hey up, oh, here we go. It's often paramedics who are asked to decide whether someone who's behaving unusually is OK Hello. or presents a danger to themselves and others. Are you all right? What's your name? Peter Bradley. Peter? Yeah. What's happening, Peter? Nothing, why? No, no, we've just got a call, that was all. No, nothing's up. That's fine. The first thing that we'll do is assess the capacity. So in amongst the, the conversation that we're having, will ascertain, do they know who they are, where they are, what day it is, etc. You feel all right? Yeah, I feel fine. Where, where do you live? Yeah. Feel all right to be left? Well, I would like to go to hospital, actually. See that angel. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can, we can quite happily take you there. Please. Yeah? Please, please. He wants to go to hospital. Okay. To see the angels. Oh, OK. All right. Yeah. There are some strange and wacky people out there, but that doesn't mean that they have a mental health problem. But it is that, what could be considered that fine balance as to when someone is just a bit strange in manner or bizarre, and when they do fall into the category of, of having a mental illness. Take a seat anywhere, Peter. You all right there? They're all coming from the YMCA. It's like Pandora's box at YMCA, full of dirty little secrets. There's something buried over there. I walked past it the other night and I heard a crying baby. So I jumped in the bush and started looking for that baby. I've got a four-page report mm. from a bloke called Adam who came to my post office in Sesame in 2013. If everything that they're saying is total tripe, then, you know, it may well be that the, you know, they're just intoxicated or have been um, using illegal substances. But if there's a lot of sense in what they're saying, mixed in with this bizarre notions, then perhaps it is an acute mental health presentation. Do you yeah. believe that angels and demons, life and death, do you believe there's angels out there fighting for your life, your soul? I do. Right. Not much as obvious, isn't it? You swear, Sonny? I think as much as obvious, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, stop thinking I'm fucking mad when I'm not. No, we're not, we're not saying right, that. You've assessed me, there's no reason to hold me here, there's no reason to hold me outside. Where, where, where are you going to go? Well, I'll just walk the streets, I'll the way I'm open. Hang on, hang on a minute, just, just a sec. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Have, you, have, you, have, you, have you not, have you not yeah. done a sleep here? Just... on me. Come back clear. Thank you. <laughs> Peter? John, just hold them there for a sec, mate. You call them the number. He's not got capacity from our side. He's not got capacity from our side. No, not to be left. True, he's done a CPN check for me. There's nothing wrong with me, guys. Relax, calm yourself. Am I relaxed? These are holding me here on full pretenses. They've done a CPN check for me. No, no, no. I can't let you walk away. Yes, you can. You can. To us, he hasn't got capacity to be left. He was all right getting in the vehicle talking sense and then all of a sudden he just changed. Cheshire police are trialling um, having a mental health nurse um, out with them. Said he's been walking on uh, hell, his feet are burning. If we raise concerns then the police can, if it's available on that particular day, request the mental health nurse to, to come and assess the patient. She wants to, she can hop in the ambo and have a chat with yeah, him there. Yeah, that'd be brilliant if you don't yeah. mind saying, is that all right? Yeah, we don't mind. This is Peter. Peter. Hello, my name's Kate. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Hiya. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we're thinking maybe the back of the ambulance could be quieter in there, yeah? Let's go. I'll stay with you. Peter, can you tell me do you think you've got any problems? No, I haven't. And I don't hear voices. If you're hearing voices, they're in your fucking heads, not mine. I didn't say you I don't hear nothing. All right? 
Okay, that's fine. Right. Do you think there is anything? No, there's any nothing wrong with me. Okay. My eyes are open. Why are you so angry? I'm not angry. I want to get out of this ambulance and go. Okay, well, you're holding me under false pretenses. Right, Does it matter where I go? Yeah, we just want to make sure you're all right. I'm all right, thank you. I want to know if there's anything. Any there's problems. nothing wrong. Oh, all right, okay. If you genuinely believe you're fine, and then you've got a group of people in uniform telling you you're not fine, um, that may well just antagonise you more, frustrate you more, because. Um, you know, when I'm right, I like to think I'm right. <laughs> and I don't like being told that I'm wrong. Well, I want to know, is, is there anything that we can help you with? I've just said there's nothing wrong. Okay. Are you listening? Okay. There's nothing wrong. In this individual's mind, they are right. And they've got a group of people saying that, you know, saying that you're wrong. Does it matter where I go? It does. does it, do, do I ask you where you go at night? No. Right, so don't ask me. Do I ask you where you got night? Okay. You? 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 Don't ask me. It's a thin line, isn't it? It's a fine line between, what was it? Madness and a genius. Okay. Can I ask you one question, please? Sir? Oh. Have you been using any drugs? No. Okay, nothing at all. No. Do you like those drugs? Well, come it depends on. if we're talking legal or illegal. Well, it's sort of a bit of coke. I've never used coke in my mm. whole life. Crack then. <coughs> never used crack? Cannabis. Never used cannabis? Oh, I don't believe you about your crack. Do you not? No. Why is that? Well, someone's lying. Well, they've just sucked some of the demon out there, aren't they? He's got a bad heart okay. around here then. They were saying you've been talking about demons. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Do you not read these books with these, these, these authors write books on demons and fucking angels and mm -hmm. life and death? Well, don't question me about it. There's, a, there's got to be a method behind the madness, isn't there? It's like, this is who I am, and this is what people... I, don't, I think this is what people can't get a grip of. This is who I am in life. I might be eccentric or... But this is who I am in life. I can't help being who I am. I can't be someone I'm not. And I'm not going to change for these, because they want me to. So if I want to go like that, it's because I'm saying to myself, this must have been booming with devils and fucking worshippers back in the day, the Pendle witches. Boom! Doesn't mean I'm bad. I know he's a fruitcake anyway, but you've got to look at people like Derek Acora that do this most haunted, you know, and it's just like, you've got to ask yourself, well, hang on a minute, who needs to be assessed here, me or him? Because... Come on. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Peter, I am a little bit worried oh, about you. give it a rest. Room. Give it a rest. You're not worried. You just want me to lock me up. Shall I go? No, I'm going. And you're not going to stop me. And you're not going to take me to the hospital, because there's nothing wrong. I don't hear voices. I don't see a glass half empty. I see one half full. I don't have a belief that one year, England going to bring the World Cup home. I have a five-day will. There's nothing wrong. My head's clear. Okay. So is my heart and my soul. And I'm a free man. Shall I go out first? No, I'm going. I've done nothing wrong. And no one can stop me. Yeah. No one. If it's deemed that they lack capacity, that then gives us power under the Mental Capacity Act to convey them to A&E against um, their wishes, but acting obviously in their best interests. I've done nothing wrong! Will try as best we can to persuade them to come with us. However, if they're still refusing to, we would then ask for police assistance with that. You've got mental health issues, you have. You've got mental health issues? Have you got mental health issues? Yeah, you have. Yeah, you have. You're not going to go to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. Listen, right. listen, Peter. because you're a bit agitated and we're going to take you to Holland's Park Hospital. <laughs> all right? We're going to get some doctors to come out and see you. All right? Let's go. But I swear to God, it's the biggest mistake you've made. How's that? Yeah. All right. Okay. Pete, Pete, just relax. Pete. Just relax while we're in the back of this ambulance. If you break a bone, over time it will recover. A mental health presentation, it could last hours, it could last days, weeks, a lifetime, couldn't it?
That's the frightening thing. Police emergency. There's two people in my bedroom, but I don't know who they are. They won't speak to me. And is it a male or female in your, in your bedroom? Um, a male and a female. Are they actually in your bed? Um, no, no, they were under my bed before. I tried to, like, say hello, but they just hit, hit under my bed. So I think they think I'm dangerous or something. OK, let me, let me see if I can get somebody over to you. Are you there on your own, other than these two people? Andy, can you get me an ambulance, please? Yeah. I live on my own. Yeah. I would say there's never a shift that goes by without at least a handful of people calling with mental health problems. Is that exactly what's happened? It, it's me now. Yes, I've ha ha had like a, 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 a panic attack, um, but it's been lasting quite, quite a long time and there's nothing that I can take for it, so... OK, that, that's fine. I just need to run through a couple of questions, just answer them as best that you can, OK? Yeah. Are you clammy? Uh, 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 um... Because you can't see mental health, it can be a very difficult thing to assist somebody with. You've just got to really listen to what they're saying to you. They say this is the hardest step, the first step, just to ask for help. Your job, I suppose, is to try and tease out what's happening to them and, uh, and try and make sense of uh, what help they need. Ambulance, what's the emergency? I, uh, we was walking along an alleyway and then we seen this guy jump from the wall. Oh, OK, do you know why he's done that? Well, no, but... How old is he? How old are you? He's 48, he looks about 45. OK, when did this happen? Yeah, about 10 minutes ago. And is yeah. he breathing? Yeah, yeah, but he needs to be looked at, that's all. A 48-year-old male who's jumped off a wall and has now sustained a head injury. Look at the state of him. Has he fallen off a wall? Has he been hit? Caution. Cab door open. Are you with him, are you, bud? Or have you just no, found no, him? No, I, I, I just seen him jump off the side of the thing. What, what did he jump off? Just so we know what kind of height. And this is where he's obviously landed, isn't it? Yeah, it's there. So he was stood like that and he's just... He wanted to hurt himself, but... What's that about five foot? Why is he doing it from there, you know what I mean? Oh. He might be scared of heights and just thought that, that's how he is, I'll go. Let's go and check him over then. What have you been doing? Why have you jumped off a wall? Same thing, what? It's not ended in a laugh though, has it? No, not really. What medical problems do you have? Simon, don't touch the back of your head. So. Yeah, you banged it, that's why. <sighs> He's jumped yeah. off a wall that's about five foot high, but he's just he's saying as if he's intentionally. What, what's gone on tonight? Because you've been seen jumping off a wall about five foot high. Yeah. Yeah, you jumped off the wall there. Have you any history of self-harm, anything like that? Uh, I took overdoses before. Oh, kid up. You've not taken an overdose or anything tonight, have you? Mm. No. But you have in the past? Yes, I have. Okay. Was you having any suicidal thoughts tonight? Not tonight, no. no. Let's get you to A&E. I probably used to overthink a little when I was younger. Um, wasn't mad on school, got a little bit bullied at school. Um, and whether that started the ball rolling, I don't know. I'd never uh, thought in a million years I'd end up like the way I am. But it's just happened. It's just uh, got a grip of me and it can happen to anyone, I suppose. <laughs> Who's your next to kid? When I first started with it, I was married. Um, and that was because I didn't like saying anything because it felt as though I was like a bit of an outcast or whatever. You all right? Well, 
It's the pressures of like earning enough money to survive, to get by. You know, all those pressures are put on you and things, you know, can get a bit hard, I suppose. I go on Facebook and see all my mates from school, they're all married and they've got kids and stuff like that, you know, and I'm still here, plodding along, single. Not a failure, but not fitting in. One, two, three. There we are. Oops. Hello, sir. Hello. How are you? As well, I've been better, but I'm OK. Good. It's had a grip of me a few times. I've been really, really low sometimes. He's been in, uh, drink, out drinking today. Decided to jump off a, a five foot wall or thereabouts. I just feel like, you know, some people should know that it, just because you've got depression or anxiety doesn't mean you're a freak or any, anything different. It's just a little condition that you've got that sometimes gets a grip of you. If I'm having a bad day and I might start moaning about something, I can always take myself back to work and think of an incident or think of someone I've met recently where I think, well, actually, my worries and my concerns just pale into insignificance. Tell me exactly what's happened. I, I just don't want to be in it, no worry. I'm not done anything yet, but I'm just fucking on the cusp of doing something and I don't want to. Right, OK. So so you're feeling suicidal, are you? Yeah, I am, yeah. OK. Uh, I don't we do not anything. get enough training on mental health, and that's probably why so many people dread getting that call, because if you say one wrong word that maybe doesn't even mean anything to you, that could mean a lot to them, and one wrong word to them could just tip them over the edge. Are you feeling violent towards anyone? Not anyone, no, just myself. Just yourself. And do you have a Without weapon that. there? Well, what I could use is a weapon, yeah, but I won't have no one else if that's what you're asking. Right. What is it? Well, a knife, a spoon, a fucking butter knife, anything. Anything you can use as a weapon, can't you? No, but what I'm saying to you is I won't harm your uh, your officers. Right, OK. But did you say that you've got a knife and a spoon there? Yeah, yeah, but everyone's got a knife and a spoon, yeah. haven't they? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, you're right um, I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not hostile to anyone but myself. I don't think you'll need the police, mate, because he's... I don't want you to get fucking heads up and that, because uh, I, don't, I don't want to well, go back Yeah, but he's just saying there. he's got a knife, but not everyone's got a knife, hasn't he? You, know. you could be saving lives at this moment instead of fucking putting up with some mug who's got a depression problem. Well, to be fair, if I'm on the phone to you and I can stop you from, from harming yourself, then... You know, that's right, quite satisfactory it, 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 to myself, I'll be honest with all you. All right. I'm just going to put some music on. You're just going to put some music on? Is that all right? Oh, well, it depends what it is, really. Oh, uh, well, we just have to listen to it, aren't you? That's a bit of a... That's a bit of a... Black Sabbath. Yeah, that'll do, yeah. Yeah, I'll just leave your phone next to it so you can chill. To the hotel, <laughs> it's like listening to one of those fuzzy radio stations, you know, it keeps dropping in and out. I'd say I've, I've had to grow up quite a lot. Um, like, I, I, I know, like before, all these stuff that I talk about on a daily basis is just stuff like that happens on the news. You know, you just watch it on the news, all, all that shit in it, and all right. Then you continue eating your tea or whatever. I think now, it became a bit more real to me, actually, when I was stood in the chip here with my dad a few weeks ago. Um, and it was quite quite busy, and we was waiting for the chips, and I just turned to him and said, I took a call today for someone that sliced their own throat with a serrated steak knife. Like, quite loud as well. I didn't realise how loud I'd said it. And then some bloke that was stood next to us was like... My dad was like, sorry. <laughs> 
And he just had to say, you're in the chippy. This is not normal. <laughs> not normal conversation. Getting some help, please. We're just plastic people trying to attack me. We're making a lose occasion. I've already broken the massive mill. I've already raped the bed. So who's at your house then? Some fucking plastic evil bitches and some man that's trying to, like, pimp them all out. Uh, who are they? Do you know the names? Police. Hello. All right, can I come in? You broke a mirror? Yeah. Any injuries? You say you've... No, I just broke the mirror! Alright, how did you break the mirror? I'm getting a water bottle and smashing it in! Right, okay. Is there anyone else at the address? No! Right, okay. Do you, do you mind if I take a seat? Whatever. Is that alright? Because I don't like standing over you, that's all. Ooh. So what can you tell me then about what's going on? How come you've called us today? Because I need some help! Right. Yesterday I went to fucking despair and I couldn't speak! And it's gonna get worse! And worse! And worse! Just try and keep yourself calm. No! Right. Well, we're here to try and help you, aren't we? Well, help me now! Get me some right. fucking A&E! Right. Are you happy to go to A&E? Get me some fucking A&E now! Right. When I first joined this job, I didn't have any awareness, to be honest with you. Um, I, I grew up, as I say, in in a really nice, uh, homely environment. Um, there was never any any mental health uh, in my family because it was so small. Um, I suppose, in a way, I was sheltered from it, from 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 mental health, um, and I didn't have any idea at all. There was so much in the community. Right, I need you to breathe, alright, I need you just to calm down, we're getting you to hospital. We're here to help you out. If you've got any issues, just, uh, just pull over. In my experience, a lot of mental health jobs do come in on the night shift, when social workers, street triage teams have gone home. So then that leaves it down to the frontline response to manage these situations. How old are you? What are you I don't believe the police are the best position to manage mental health. But the big thing is, if we didn't, then who else would answer these cries for help? Brought someone in, she's a voluntary patient. She's uh, basically, she's hearing voices and she wants to speak to someone about it. You're all booked in. Are you happy to remain here, yeah? Yeah. OK. And you're going to keep nice and calm for us, aren't no. you? No. All right, I know it's difficult, and I do sympathise with your situation, but you need to stay calm. But please do your best. So, so yeah, pack it in. God. All right. You don't... Need to be arrested no, you, you don't. Do you want a glass of water? To throw in someone's head, yeah? All right. I was thinking more to drink. No? I can't do anything! I can't go! Alright, just relax. We'll see what you can do. You're right for a bit. Mental health will be ringing back. And I will see what that is. But last we looked, there was no spaces in the northwest, unfortunately. Okay. Alright, sure. Come here, leave us in problems. Thank you. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, go on, Carl. Alright, Sarge, free to speak. Yeah, go on, Carl. This last, we took her to a &E. She's a voluntary attender. And however, there's no beds in any mental health unit in the North West at the moment. But they're saying we have to remain with her. Is it in order for us to leave and leave her in the hands of A&E under the, their care and uh, security? Excuse me, so we can still get back here. What do we do as the police? Because whilst we're there, however long that takes to find a room or a bed, 
that's three resources that can't go to the domestic calls where females being assaulted, that can't go to the traffic collisions, that can't go potentially to the next mental health job. Hi, Sarge. Yeah, if she's getting herself now, then yeah, leave her mate off school responsibility. We should be handed over to A&E, you know. At the end of the day, security there to manage stuff like this. Every time. Where's the security? Where do they hang out? Uh, I'm ringing in relation to this lass that we've just brought in. She's calm and compliant, but she's here voluntarily. She's not here under any sectioning. Um, so, are you able to come and take over uh, standing outside? You don't have to be in the same room as her on the other door. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. As long as you can monitor from the CCTV. And obviously, if she goes to leave, then let us know. Okay. Someone's going to come and speak to you shortly, sweetheart. All right. Okay. Come on. It is a lose-lose. If there's no hospitals available, then what do you do? What do you do? Where do you take this person? You can't just drop them off on the streets and say, well, see you later. You can't drop them off back home because the, the root cause hasn't been resolved. You can't drive around with these people through your entire shift in the back of the car. I think the mental health services on a whole in this country is very poor. I mean, it's not their fault, but unfortunately it is a shambles at the moment. What the hell was that all about? Not a single bed on any mental health ward. And we'll get called out again tomorrow if she hasn't done something. In which case, we'll flap and everyone will say, well, lessons will be learned for the future. You know, and, it, and it's not right. It isn't right. Well, what was initially starting out as a quiet night, quickly turned busy. It's 9.30 p.m. and PC Nayaz Waddington is responding to an allegation of violent threats against a man at the Warrington YMCA. Do you know Peter Bradley? Is he here? He's just like he's reported something to the police. I'll wait here. He's there. Yeah. Is it Peter? Right, you've um, you phoned us up. Yes, what's the time? Yeah, you you reported something about. Is there anywhere we could? Yeah. I'll, I'll wait last night. Please, yeah. Okay, thank you. <coughs> I'm going to read off this here, and then fill in the blanks. At 3 a.m. this morning, he was chased by two males in a black car. Why were you being chased by two males in a black car? It's like they were out looking for me. Right, why are two males in a black car, a maroon car, looking for you? I don't know. Right. So I said to my mate in there, I'm staying at the gypsy camp tonight because I'm in fear of my life. Then, then, that, then the biggest bloke turned around and said, Why? What are we doing at the gypsy camp tonight? Right. Has any of them made any threats out the window or anything towards you? They didn't you? have to. They were out to kill someone last night, they were out to kill me. Right. How do I know? Because my lord sent me up to do a job. He said, Pete, I've got a job for you in North. He said, but the thing is, every time I send someone up here, they never come back. No, because they're fucking buried up here somewhere. They work for the YMCA. Yeah. They drive the vans for the YMCA. Right. You just wait here for us then. I'll just go and speak to Sue. Is Sue about? Sue, I'm, I'm sorry to trouble you, love. Peter Bradley, uh, do you know anything about uh, Peter Bradley and what he's reported at the police station today? I don't know. I do know about Peter, but I don't know anything about him. Right. He's, he's, he's basically saying, three o'clock last night, two males in a black vehicle who do the vans for you here will get him tonight at the gypsy camp. Well, I don't think that's possible. And also, he told me this morning that they had balaclavas on, so... How would you be able to identify them? Yeah, this is the first time I've met him. Oh, I've met him lots. Yeah. Your previous dealings, does he does he rant yes. on about things? Well, over the past month, he's 
um, saying things constantly about people, about the devil. He was constantly going on about God and okay. all sorts of things like that. And last Sunday, he was taken to Hollins Park right. and seen um, by the mental health team, but he was released. Yes. Right, OK. So. After the paramedics took Peter to the psychiatric hospital, he was kept under observation for just two hours before being released. What happens is he comes back out and he's facing the same set of circumstances again and again. And that must be very wearing and, and it's difficult to stay positive about that really, isn't it? In here, he's only really allowed to come in in the evening because he's... Peter, just come and sit down and have a seat. Stop shouting. Stop shouting. Stop shouting. Peter, listen to me. I think in mental health is very poorly supported. If you've got a mental health problem and somebody's coming to visit you for three hours once a week, that's not much good to you, is it? When you're living seven days a week, 24-7, with voices in your head or other things, really. Peter, I've spoken to Sue. She's going to keep an eye on you while she, while she's here. You staying at the room at the inn tonight? Yeah. Any questions you want to ask me? Yeah. Go on. Yeah. Pete, if I had a wand, I could wave it and make no, things... When it starts to get dark, I can feel that someone's going to play a candidate. Yeah. Well, there's going to be people there, so you're going to be safe there, aren't you? Yeah? I hope so. OK. Some years ago, they introduced something called care in the community, where they brought people out who'd been in long-term mental health hospitals, really, and the idea was that there was going to be support in the community, and I think a lot of people have been failed as a result of that. We do the best that we can. It'll only be a matter of time before it falls apart. Ambulance in service, guy speaking. What's your address, please? No address. I, I, I'm in town now, don't I? Right, so where are you now? Yeah, I'm in a phone box out of me. Right, OK, so you're in a phone box at the moment? I don't want an ambulance. Right, you don't want an ambulance? No, I don't, no, because I, I, I've had loads of like, so like, like, missed calls off like, the ambulance people. Sorry, I'm a bit confused. You've received phone calls from us. Yeah, yeah, because I've been suicidal all night. Right, right, OK. So they, they, they've been, like, ringing like, ring me and you done. Right, OK, I understand, OK. Now, so what I really need to do is find out exactly where that phone box is. If you're telling me that you're feeling suicidal, yeah, I need to get... I so I want to get help to you. I want to get help to you. But if you move away from where you are, I'm not going to be able to find you. So, it, can you see what the road is called? Right, so I'm wasting my time out. No, no, you need to stay where you are. No, I'm going. No, listen to me. You have to hide your panic. If if you panic, then then everything's lost. Well, yeah. if you go now, then I won't be able to get the help to you with, like... You are, I suppose it's the metaphorical duck on the, uh, on the pond, isn't it? Above it, you are, you're calm and collected and underneath your... You're paddling for dear life. What's your name? What's my name? My name's Guy. Yeah, Guy, I phoned you because I'm sweating. I'm still, I still feel like... Yeah, you still feel like... <laughs> do, do myself in. Right, OK, then. Well, then that's why I'm going to stay on the line with you, to make sure that the crew get there so they can help you, OK? Yeah, but... Don't hang up on me. Thank Keep you, talking you. to me. All right. I'm biting the bullet from you. Yeah. Right, if you've got a mobile phone on you? Yeah. All right. It ran out of battery. It's ran out of battery. OK, where do you live? No voices, but the voices that you hear normally from you. Right, so you're hearing voices at the moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, well, listen to my voice then. You just talk to me and allow those other voices just to be at the back a second, OK? Yeah, something's right, though. OK, well, just tell me about what you've been doing today. We'll have a little chat about some stuff. I don't want to put a phone down here, I promise you. OK, well, just... I'm going, I'm going. Well, tell me what you've been doing today. It's a hell of a responsibility. You wouldn't be human, and you definitely wouldn't do this job if you weren't affected by cause. You come into this job to, to help people. Um, and of course, when you are 
unable to do that, it's immensely frustrating. Um, and you do carry it. But then I have to get on and do my job and I have to be prepared for the next person who calls. Ambulance service, what's the address of the emergency, please? Over the last decade, suicides of people suffering from mental health problems have increased by nearly 30%. need heart of stone to do this job just to skin a steel. Because if you have heart of stone, you become switched off and emotionless. And you can't be like that in this job. But in the same sense, you can't let things bother you because if you did, it would drive you mad. I've not seen him yet, mate. We're going to have to go from the top. Oh, from the top you can, but not. What's your name, mate? Peter. <clears throat> and you didn't go down to him, did you? I, no, no, I can't. It's like the no, isn't it? Where is it? Yeah. It is, isn't it? So anywhere through there. Probably through there. Yeah, right? I'll head down to him if you we'll want. Just, yeah. Save us all going through, won't it? <laughs> one one seven, yeah. Yeah. I can confirm it's the uh, same male as photograph. 117, yeah. 117. Paramedics have confirmed life extinct. Um, gonna leave him in situ for CSI to photograph. Um, we'll start commencing a, a scene. When I go to a job where there's a mental health patient, I feel for that person and that person's my priority. When I go to a job involving mental health and they've committed suicide, I kind of stop thinking about that person and then think about the family and the ones that they've left behind. I, I've seen the effects that it's had on the children, on partners, on their parents. And is that going to just be a cycle then? Is that going to lead them into a depression or a state where they suffer from uh, another mental health breakdown? I don't want to be the person that goes and knocks on his uh, family's door. In this job, you've got to be compassionate. You've got to love what you do. But in the same sense, you've got to put that, that shield up um, to fight off the negative emotions that you can get. Spag ball for tonight. And really crispy garlic bread is what my vote's going towards. <laughs> I'm 23 years old, I've come across more suicides and more sudden deaths than most people will in an entire lifetime. When the police was first created, they had very narrow shoulders. It was to fight crime, nothing more, nothing less. Now, his shoulders have to stretch for miles. 50% of my job is dealing with crime. The rest of it is broke up into things that are nothing to do with the police. I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't 
turn my back on someone when they want help and they're giving a cry for help. Glad he jumped off a wall. Simon continues to work full time and is feeling more positive about the future. The girl taken to A&E did not get a place in a mental health unit that night. Are you happy to remain here, yeah? But has now been admitted to a specialist hospital for treatment. Son, can I go? Peter is still being supported by the staff at the YMCA. I have a positive outlook on life. I never see a glass half empty. I always wake up in the, small, in the mornings with a smile on my face. I don't know why, but I do. People even say to me, Pete, you never wake up grotty in the morning or grumpy. But why? Life's not about that. Life's about living and being happy. Okay.